If you were a victim of malicious gaslighting, it was probably pretty far into it before you found out. And you might be wondering, were there some signs that I missed? Or if you're on the outside looking in, you might wonder why somebody would believe someone who's trying to override their reality. So in this video, I'm going to address both of these things by sharing five gaslighting tactics that most people miss. Because in reality, the beginning, the early signs are quite subtle. My name is Christina, and this channel is dedicated to helping you recognize and overcome the effects of emotional abuse. So if this is something that's touched your life, consider subscribing. There's a whole lot of helpful content here for you. And if you think you've encountered gaslighting, I have a free download that you might find helpful. And it goes through all of the phrases that people use when they're gaslighting. And it has some helpful workbook pages to help you start to work through the aftermath. So the first reason you might have missed gaslighting in your relationship is because it happens gradually. And gaslighting usually does happen gradually. And this is how they get you to buy into it. But it especially is gradual when you're dealing with someone whose go-to abuse tactic is covert abuse. This often happens with the covert narcissist, but not always. Anyone can gradually gaslight you and to kind of amp things up as they go along. It's like they just turn up the volume little by little by little. You don't even notice it's happening. So I've talked a lot about covert abuse and the covert narcissist on this channel. And when I reference this type of abuse or this personality, a lot of times I'll mention the phrase death by a thousand paper cuts. And I have since heard that that's not the actual phrase, but I've been saying it for so long, so I'm just gonna keep rolling with it because it so well describes what it's like to be in a relationship with someone like this. To be in a relationship with someone who is gradually eating away at your sense of self, your self-worth, and your self-esteem. It becomes difficult to point out one thing that was really big because it's not necessarily one thing that's really big. It's small things that add up over time. Although we know there are usually some big things too. So if someone gave you a thousand paper cuts and you're laying there in the worst pain of your life, it would be silly to point to one and say, this one right here, this is the one that did it. Because it's not. That one paper cut is tiny, right? But it's the fact that you have a thousand of them that really contributes to the pain. So definitely in the beginning, gaslighting is usually subtle. Even if you're not dealing with a covert abuser, even if somebody is very overt in other abuse tactics, gaslighting usually does start subtly. Because gaslighting, when it gets really intense, when it gets to the next phases, if someone started there, you wouldn't believe them. They have to lay the groundwork in order to get you to that point where you are feeling like a shell of yourself and you're questioning yourself so much that you feel like you have no choice but to believe what this person's telling you even if your gut's telling you it's wrong. So I'll give you an example. In the beginning, it might start with something super simple that you could not even point to as gaslighting. Something that you could brush off so easily that almost anyone would brush it off because we do like to give people the benefit of the doubt. None of us are perfect. So we're talking about something like, you never told me that, or I never said that. And in the case of you never told me that, you could justify that even if you know Deep down, you know you have no question that you said those words to that person. You could so easily brush it off and say, well, you know, maybe they weren't listening when I said it, or maybe they just forgot. And those things could totally be true. But if you're seeing a pattern of something like this happening, where somebody is saying something that you know isn't true, but you could easily brush it off, just be careful about brushing it off too often. We don't want to be too hard on people we love, but we also want to hold on to our sense of reality, our sense of self, our self-esteem. So then gaslighting usually progresses again, gradually. And this could include just an example is something like the person criticizing everything you do. And again, that will start out gradually. And I mentioned in one video that it could get to the point where you can't cut an onion when you're preparing dinner without that person standing over you and telling you that you're doing it wrong. And these types of things, they're small, they're paper cuts. But again, when there are patterns of them over time, you start doubting yourself. Before you do anything in front of this person, especially, you think, well, what are they going to say about this now? How am I doing this wrong now? 
And you might even start changing your behavior, modifying your behavior before you get those corrections. This is where we start losing that sense of self and start losing our self-confidence. And then of course, eventually we reach the stage where it's full-blown gaslighting, where in hindsight, you can look at it and there is no question, this is gaslighting that's happening. But by this point, you're already in the third phase that a person goes through when they've been gaslit over an extended period of time. And if you missed the phases, I do mention them in another video that I will link to. I'll link to that in the card and the description. But for now, a quick overview, the phases are disbelief, defense, and depression. So if you missed that video, definitely check it out. I do cover what it feels like and what it looks like to be in each of those stages. And if you've dealt with gaslighting, this information can be very validating and it's also good to know. So another thing that you can expect when gaslighting is in its full blown phase, when there are no masks hiding it anymore, is that the person who's gaslighting you will probably be a lot more obvious about the reasons why they're gaslighting you. Let me know in the comments if you can relate, if you've experienced this before. But once gaslighting in a relationship reaches an all time high, the person who's gaslighting you stops trying to hide things. They stop trying to hide the reason behind their gaslighting. And they may have multiple reasons. They may gaslight you about a bunch of things. It could just be that they're a narcissist and they don't want you getting too close. It could be that they're cheating on you. They're stealing money from you. They could be gaslighting you for any number of reasons. They could just purely be doing it for control. But remember that over time, gaslighting really chips away at your sense of self and your self-esteem. So by the time you get to this point, you're probably feeling, unfortunately, like a shell of your former self. Your former self before all this gaslighting would have called this stuff out, would have done so many things differently. And we could even get into the cycles where we beat ourselves up for not doing those things because we feel like we're not strong enough. We feel like somehow we're failing. But again, this is all the effects of the gaslighting. And if you're in this place, if you're feeling this way, it's not your fault. This is what happens with this type of abuse. And this is why it's abuse. We're not just talking about a conversational tactic. We're not just talking about somebody who occasionally tells a white lie. What we're talking about is abuse. And this is why it has that impact. All right, so that was just number one. I know we spent a lot of time on that, but it really lays the groundwork for the other four. And we will get through those, I promise, much more quickly. Or at least I promise to do my best. So another gaslighting tactic that you might miss is omission. And so this is omission maliciously, with malicious intent, omitting important things that you really should know because you would live your life a whole lot differently if you did. And I have a couple of examples, but before I get to that, I wanna point out again with gaslighting and with so many other things, when we talk about examples, it doesn't mean that if you do this one time, then you're a gaslighter. In order to protect ourselves and to keep ourselves safe, when we feel the need to evaluate relationships like this, it's usually because we're seeing patterns of things that are not okay. And what we're looking at here are examples of things that could be patterns that are not okay. So for example, somebody who is gaslighting you, they might tell you that they're going out for drinks with their friends, but they don't tell you. The thing that they omit is that they're going out for drinks with friends of the person that they're cheating on you with along with the person that they're cheating on you with. And when you start asking questions, you'll only get more gaslighting. And again, we're looking at patterns. If someone is maliciously gaslighting you, it is not gonna be a one-off thing. So another gaslighting tactic that's really hard to detect because you get so swept up in the moment has to do with reactive abuse. So this is when someone who is abusive says or does something to trigger you. They know this thing is gonna get you. It's gonna get you going. They might do it so you look like the bad guy. They might do it to embarrass you in front of other people and to do it with their hands clean. So reactive abuse is manipulation. What makes it gaslighting? Well, a good portion of the time, they're doing it to distract you from something. The person who's pulling your strings is trying to get you to react, to either act out in anger or to really just dig your heels in and try to defend yourself. And you're so focused on the 
defensive. Maybe you're even so focused on the offensive, on telling that person off, that you don't see anything else. You're distracted. So the question here becomes, what are they distracting you from? And we can go really deep into that, but for now, I'll just say, just start paying attention. There's so much you can uncover by keeping your reactions in check and just paying attention. So another gaslighting tactic that can be hard to miss. Sometimes this one's obvious and sometimes it's not. But this one has to do with triangulation. So this is when an abusive person will try to sway your opinion of someone else. They will try to get you to think that someone else is out to get you or someone else does not have your best interests at heart. This other person just can't be trusted. And if someone seems to be doing this to you, Again, pay attention because somebody who's abusive will often do this to keep you away from your inner circle, to keep you away from the people you would normally go to for support and maybe reality checking when you're starting to not believe everything that this abusive person is saying. And this next often overlooked gaslighting tactic is one that I don't think I've ever really talked about on this channel before, which is a little bit surprising to me. But this tactic is normalization. This is normalizing bad behavior. So this person who's gaslighting you will do anything and everything in an attempt to get you to believe that whatever they're doing is normal. And you're the problem because you have a problem with that. To take it a step further, they will probably make you feel like everyone else thinks it's normal. You're the only one who thinks there's something wrong with this. And to take it even a step further, they'll tell you why you're the only person who has a problem with this. And usually that's some version of you're too sensitive, you're too jealous, you're too this, you're too that. Again, all pointing to the concept that there's something wrong with you and nothing wrong with the person who's being abusive to you. And if you can relate to this or anything that we've talked about here today, the one message that I want you to take away from this is you are not the problem. And if you find yourself ever questioning that, watch this video right here and I'll see you next time.